Hello and welcome, my name is Buggerton at boardgamer.co.uk and this is the Encyclopedia Factorio. This entry we shall be discussing armour and damage types. Armour, not unlike many other things in Factorio, has many uses starting from basic protection from foes to providing some downright awesome upgrades. There are five types of armour, each with increasing damage resistances, and before we get into them we're going to talk about damage types. Physical damage is dealt by all types of bullets, shotgun shells and axes. It's the damage type dealt by the enemies called biters, and also the type one can attribute to colliding with or being struck by moving cars, tanks and trains. Surprisingly this is a thing you might actually come across quite often. Fire damage is dealt only by the flamethrower, acid damage is the type associated with the two enemies spitters and worms, and it's worth noting that as buildings have weaker resistance to acid than physical, spitters will tend to be more deadly for them. Poison damage is dealt only by poison capsules, explosion damage is done by rockets and explosive rockets, and lastly laser damage is dealt by laser turrets, distractor and destroyer capsules, along with the personal laser defense. Enemies typically only have physical and explosive damage reduction, if any at all. A listed damage resistance has two values. The first represents a flat damage reduction and the second a percentage reduction. The value used is whichever would provide the higher resistance. More specifically, an armor with physical resistance listed as 3 stroke 20% would reduce damage by 3 unless the incoming damage was high enough that a 20% reduction would exceed this. Anything from 4 to 15 damage would be mitigated by 3, with higher values receiving the flat 20% reduction. When resistance equals incoming damage, it's reduced to half a point of damage. Further resistance resistance lowers it to a third, and then a quarter, and then it continues in the pattern of the harmonic series. MATHEMATICAL! Each armor also has a durability value, and like with weapons and tools, once depleted will break and disappear. When you build a suit of armor, you'll automatically equip it into the armor slot should it be free, or you can simply hold shift or control and left click on it from your inventory, or pick it up and place it in the designated slot in order to pop it on. Onto the first armor type, Iron Armor. It's unlocked with the tier 1 armor crafting research and comes in at just 10 science pack 1s or red pots. It costs a meager 40 iron plates to craft and is available fairly early on in the game. It provides the Defensive stats as shown on the screen. Typically, unless you're in a desert start, and even then, you'll probably want to skip this armor and go straight for the heavy armor, which also only requires red pots to research, but does also require knowing how to make steel. Much more expensive at 50 steel, which equates to 250 iron, and 100 copper plates, it's well worth investing in a suit of heavy armor. This armor is so strong that it'll make you all but invulnerable to small biters, the only creature that'll actually attack you in early game. If you go assaulting any enemy bases, however, you might encounter worms, and the medium or big variants will still slice through you like a blade through air. Basic modular armor is unlocked with the third armor crafting upgrade, and requires the tier 2 green pots. You'll also need your factory to be working in the oil industry, since both the red advanced circuits and the expensive blue processing units are required to build it. The armor has identical resistances to heavy armor, with double the durability and the added benefit of having slots for modules. To open up this grid, as with any of the modular armors, you just need to right click it, either whilst equipped or from your inventory. But with only a 5x5 grid available for modules, most players tend to skip this particular armour. Power Armour Mark 1 requires that you've researched electric engines, and itself requires tier 3 blue pots. It also needs 10 alien artifacts gathered from defeated enemy spawners in order to be constructed. With higher resistances and a 7x7 module grid, it's far superior to the modular armour, yet still many players, even first time players, opt to skip this too. Once you have all the correct industry set up for Power Armor, you might as well just go straight for the Mark II variant. Power Armor Mark II is the business. It is second to none in resistances and comes with a full size 10x10 modular grid. It does cost an enormous amount to manufacture and requires alien science packs or purple pots in order to research. You'll also need to meet several prerequisites in order to unlock alien technology to produce the purple pots, along with requiring both efficiency and speed modules research to 3, both also tier 4 researches. The armor requires five of both of those tier 3 modules, along with 50 alien artifacts, 40 steel and 40 processing units to create. On top of that, you'll want to research many of the module types for the armor, namely portable fusion reactors, energy shields Mark II, basic exoskeleton equipment, and possibly also night vision goggles and the personalized roboport. We'll look at the power armor modules in depth in their own dedicated entry of the Encyclopedia Factorio. But for now, here are some of our recommended loadouts for your power armor Mark II. This is a fairly standard combat loadout. We use three 
fusion reactors, as any fewer and the power just isn't enough to maintain all five shields along with the legs, and when you take damage, the power will prioritize the shields, leading to a loss of speed which in some circumstances may prove fatal. It's quite common for people to carry a few construction robots, or constructor bros, and some personal roboports and swap them in and out with some of their shields when they know they're not going to be involved in combat. Some folk also like to use six exoskeleton legs and only have two fusion reactors outside of combat in order to get that extra boost of speed. Either swap out what you need when you need it, or have a couple of different power armor setups ready to swap in and out as and when desired. While they initially cost a very large amount, later in the game Power Armor Mark II eventually becomes pretty easy to manufacture, and so having a spare set isn't as ludicrous as it might sound. That brings a close to our look at armor and damage types. For more information about the enemies, weapons or power armor modules, please visit those entries. Thanks for watching this edition of the Factorio Encyclopedia. If you have any questions, if you think I've left something out, or if you have any suggestions for new entries, then please leave a comment below or check out any one of the streams linked in the description. If you enjoyed us, please give us a like and subscribe to be one of the first to hear about new entries and videos. I've been Buggerton, good evening.